talk now to our power player for the whole hour, Jimmy Rogers. Now, you have some, some basic advice for investors at, at this point in the market. You say stocks could go to crazy levels, well, but, and there's print, a big but. They're printing so much money that I would not be short. I have no shorts, and most of my life I've always had a short of two or three or 16. Why not this time? Because I'm afraid they're printing so much money that stocks could go to 20,000 or 30,000. Of course, it would be in worthless money, but it could happen, and you, get, you could lose a lot of money being short. So I have no shorts. I'm worried about the currency markets. I expect there to be a currency crisis later this year or maybe next year. In so, what currency? Uh, so I wish I were that smart. Maybe the U.S. dollar. It may start right here in America. It may start with the pound sterling. I'm not quite sure. A it currency crisis. That means what exactly? That, that means cha in chaos in the currency markets. Oh, this is a wild trading. Wild trading, collapse of m one or two currencies. The Icelandic krona collapsed a couple of years ago. The you know, several currency, the ruble collapsed. Several times. S uh, several <laughs> times, yes, we've had several. But this time it'll be major currencies, and this time it'll be uh, widespread. It'll be several currencies. So because so of that, you're not shorting, but what can you do to protect against that? Well, you can buy hard assets, real assets, which is what I'm doing, because if the world economy is going to get better, commodities are going to lead to recovery. And if, commodity, if the world's not going to get better, they're printing so much money that commodities are going to be the best place to be. Doesn't this argue, if, if you feel lucky, that maybe you should buy some stocks, at least in the short run, if they're going to go up well, for whatever 20000 well, I don't, I don't, luck doesn't, I'm not very good at luck, Scott. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't base my investment decisions based on luck. Uh, I, I just see there's so many problems in the world economy. Most m industries are getting worse. The fundamentals are not getting better. The fundamentals are getting better for commodities. Fundamentals are not getting better for General Motors or Citibank or and some it, of the stocks. But it's stocks. an opportunity for a trader, isn't it? If you're a good trader, yeah, but I'm the world's worst trader. God, you, I've been coming here for 20 years. You know I'm the world's worst trader. Goodness sakes. If, if, if we had the currency crisis that you're talking about uh, because of the worldwide inflation or whatever, and, and it creates fear or panic around the globe, won't the U.S. dollar still be the premier place to go? Won't well, the currency crisis actually enhance the U.S. dollar possibly rather than... Then I, ur I urge you to buy the U.S. dollar if that's your view. I happen to think the U.S. dollar is going the way of all flesh. It's going the way of the pound sterling. No, the U.S. dollar is a terribly flawed currency. We're the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. Never in the world has a country got itself in this kind of situation. So, no, you may want to put your money in the U.S. dollar, and some people, but not. That's fewer and fewer. You know what the Chinese are saying. You know what the Russians are saying. You know what everybody is saying. There's something wrong with the currency market. They know it. I'm not the only person who right, knows it. Right, but the Chinese do own $1.7 trillion in, in U.S. Treasuries, don't they? Somewhere they, around there. Well, one, we, one, we three, think we think they say they say that it's less and less in dollars. So really, they're stuck, whether they like it or not. They can't unwind that baby anytime fast, can you they? You can you can say that, yes, but they can stop buying if nothing else. And I would suspect that somewhere along the line, somebody, whether it's the South Koreans or the Chinese or the Russians, somebody's going to say, "I'm going to start selling mine before everybody else does," right. and then, and then, uh, then that's why you yeah, have a currency yeah. crisis. Now, Bob right. Dahl, who crisis. I know you're acquainted with Bob Dahl. He he was quoted in the Financial Times and elsewhere this morning. And here's what he had to say: Long over the long term, we expect improving economic conditions will help equities to rise. We believe that stocks will outperform bonds and cash over the next 12 months. Now you're saying that they can go; stocks may go to spectacular levels. I believe the difference between those two quotes is. He bases it on improving economic fundamentals, whereas you do. Where, think where I do not. Craziness. I think it's yeah. If it if it happens, if it happens, listen, the stocks could go to five thousand. I'm not suggesting they're going to twenty thousand. I don't have any shorts. That's the only reason. I'm protecting myself by owning commodities. That's my play. What about this call for a reserve currency? from the likes of Russia and China, and would it ever happen, do you think? Well, an SDR, which is what the Chinese suggested, I cannot imagine what happened. You know, phony money has never worked. Somebody wants it, something they think is real, whether it's the dollar or whatever. I don't think these uh, special drawing rights would work. But the world does need something. I mean, we do have a problem in the world. They know we have a problem. I know we have a problem. and. I mean, many people don't believe we have a problem with the dollar, but we do. So, so if your bleak scenario comes to hold, basically you, got, you want to have money in gold? Because gold is still below 1,000, and I think inflation adjusted to the 1980 high was like 2160 or somewhere around there, so gold's got a long way to run. I, I, I own some gold, yes. I, I'd rather buy silver today at today's prices, but I own gold. I'm not selling it. I'd rather buy agriculture than either of the two. Oh, really? Um, maybe even natural gas. Well, we're going to talk to you about commodities a little bit later. We don't want to jump the gun on that, but, you know, um, there are also those who are looking at what's happening in the bond market right now and saying it's indicating growth. And there are others who are saying what's happening in the bond market right now is indicating inflation. 
Well, of course it is. It's, it's indicating two things. It's indicating crazy inflation coming, and it's indicating a gigantic debt, which the U.S. government is going to have to sell. Now, that's how I'm going to protect myself. Eventually, I'm going to short bonds. I should have shorted bonds already, of course. You know what's happened. Right. So that's going to be the best protection. I'd rather short bonds than short stocks in the foreseeable future. And you're also very heavily invested in emerging markets. How do you see emerging markets performing if this global currency crisis happens? Well, I'm not heavily invested in emerging markets anymore, but I am invested in emerging markets. I do have Chinese shares. Well, some, if, if I'm right about the way the world's going to evolve and it's going to be natural resources, then many of those natural resource economies are going to boom. Brazil's going to be a better place to be than Belgium. Australia is going to be a better place to be than Portugal going forward. You need to put your money in places that produce natural resources. So, well, today, uh, President Obama was, was in Egypt. Uh, what do you think about investing in the Middle East? Is there an opportunity there? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are great opportunities in the Middle East, but not with my You money. say with no. a twinkle in your <laughs> eye. I'm going to let you do that, Julie. Not I, with your money. <laughs> I, 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 no, I, I two don't two. know as much of your investing history as I should over previous decades, but are you often an incredibly bullish guy saying, damn the tor torpedoes, or are you often a kind of a cautious guy? How did you do 2000 to 2007 where stocks were really starting to roar? I nearly always am, have both longs and shorts. Very few times in my life have I not had Pinched. any shorts. Yeah. This is one of the few times where I have no What shorts. were the other times, Jimmy? I mean, what were the fundamentals? Well, that in 1987, when the market collapsed, I, I covered all of my shorts on my birthday. It so happened. Uh, I covered everything that I was short except for one thing. And so for a few m weeks or months, I didn't have any shorts. Uh -huh. But there, it's been rare that I haven't had any shorts. I nearly always have shorts. But I'm wildly bullish on, I did, please listen, I'm wildly bullish on commodities. I'm wildly bullish on China. I'm wildly bullish on some things. Yeah, this you're wildly bullish on China, even though the Shanghai index, I believe, year to date since only January, is up 55% off of very depressed levels. But still, 55%, we don't see some Fibonacci retracement going down 25% or something. Well, I'm not selling China. I, I bought China again in October, November. Yes, that's why I'm not buying nice. it right now. But I, I haven't, I've never sold a share in China. I've been buying shares in China for 20 years. Yeah. Never sold any of them. Uh, how long did you move there? You moved there full time. Was it two years no, ago? No, I don't live in China. I live in Singapore. Singapore. Singapore, Singapore. okay. okay. Singapore. Yeah. Nice. I, lived, I moved to Singapore two years ago. Well, yeah, yeah, you moved there right as the peak, kind of. Asia peak, right? What's the kind of the, you, you moved in and suddenly everything? That's why makes I you feel real good, doesn't it, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk more about the emerging markets that you like and China and also commodities as well. But straight ahead, we have another CNBC exclusive for you on Power Lunch. Cantor Fitzgerald CEO Howard Lutnick joins us to talk about all the volatility in the Treasury market, which I'm sure you have an interesting opinion on. Life and investing. I want to ask him about inflation. Um, you're thinking inflation is going to heat up hugely. That's one reason you like commodities, right? But more for the inflation hedge against it rather than the economic economy is no, going to no, rebound. No, 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 no. I'm optimistic about commodities because of supply and demand. There's the supply of everything is in oh, so rapid, growth. Okay. And serious decline. And so the supply side. Forget demand for the minute. Supply is going okay. to go down no matter what. And governments are printing money. So right. you have two or okay. three things so going. So did I just the read the tip spread? To, yes. Oh, do we have to? Yeah. Oh, yes, we oh, will okay. be returning to this later. But now Sandler O'Neill is hosting its annual exchange and electronic trading conference in New York. Our Bob Pisani is there and has a CNBC exclusive interview with Cantor Fitzgerald, CEO. Bob. And Julia, all the, what's great about this conference is all the heads of the brokerage firms, all the big CEOs are here talking about how business is doing. Now, six months ago, everybody was worried that it was going to be broken. It wasn't never going to come back. The mood is much more optimistic. Let's talk to one of these CEOs, Chairman Howard Lutnick, founder of Cantor Fitzgerald, founder of BCG Partners as well. Before I ask you about the business, I want to ask you about the Treasury market, because in case you're wondering, this guy operates the largest single marketplace for cash treasuries in the world. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's it. We've seen yields go through the roof. We've seen a tidal wave of new supply come in. Tell us what this is meaning for your business. Tell us what this means for the economy and inflation. Well, for BGC Partners, we, we have a huge business in electronic trading of U.S. Treasuries. And you would have thought, with all this issuance coming, volume's got to go through the roof. But strangely, because of the credit crisis, people were cutting back on trading. So last year, for a couple of the quarters, volumes were down by half in some of the most incredible fundamentals ever. Now you got deficits of a trillion, five hundred billion. You know, in the old days, I would have said that was my birthday. Because what's better than that kind of issuance? So starting two weeks ago, volume started picking up, both in the cash market, which is great for BGC Partners business, and on the CME. You know, the old Chicago Board of Trades volume. So you're going to see Treasury volumes picking up. Of course, over time, you got, you got to see yields picking up with that kind of issuance. But you know what? 